Oh. Actually, do you guys want to see how I approach somebody on the street and ask them these questions? That's, it's always, okay. Can I have a volunteer? <laughs> All, right, right All right, come on down. <laughs> What's your name? Allie. Allie, give me a hug. It's so good to see you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Um, so here, you can just sit, actually sit right there, and I'll pretend like you're just you're just relaxing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, you know, like I said, uh, I've only been photographing for four years, and there's no way I'm the best photographer in the world, um, no way I'm the best journalist in the world, but I have approached over 10,000 people on the streets of what is stereotypically, and by reputation, one of the colder cities in the world, and have asked them you know, for their photograph. So I'm thinking by about this time, I might be just about the best at the world at stopping random people on the street <laughs> and getting them to let me take their photograph. And then kind of, you know, what it is about humans in New York, and I say it's not the photography, what it is that if you want to use business terms, I'm sure some of you study business, that's the competitive advantage of humans of New York. Why is it growing so fast? Why is it so difficult to duplicate? It's the taking a atmosphere of kind of fear and strangeness and uncomfortableness and turning that into an atmosphere of intimacy where people feel comfortable to disclose in a very short amount of time. And you know the way that I figured this out is just by doing it 10,000 times and just getting beaten down, beaten down, beaten down, beaten down. Just through, you know, getting yelled at, getting, making people very nervous, getting uncomfortable. And so I just, you know, Ali, your name? Ellen, sorry. Ellen, no, that's okay. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm sure you told it to me right. Uh, <laughs> so, probably my fault. Um, and uh, so, you know, just over approaching like 10,000 people, you know, I've just kind of learned kind of naturally, and it applies to a lot of different areas. It's just how to make people comfortable when you're first meeting them. And this applies at parties or anything. And, you know, when I was first starting Humans of New York, what I was always experimenting with is what is the correct words to say, right? I thought it was like, what, what, what words can I say that are going to allow me to get this person to take my photograph? And I remember I experimented with everything. You know, I, I had my little speech. I was constantly tinkering with it. Um, just to give you an example of how much attention I was paying to it, I spent so long trying to figure out whether it'd be more effective to use the word portrait or photograph. Just something little like that. Can I take your portrait or can I take your photograph? Just like, what's it gonna be that allows these people to feel comfortable enough to let me take their picture? And then after just repeated and repeated and repeated attempts, I realized it had nothing to do with what the words I was saying. And it's, it's all about the energy that you're giving off. It's just 100% energy. And it's very hard to teach because the worst energy you can give off is nervousness. And it's almost impossible to not be nervous if you haven't approached people 10,000 times, you know what I mean? And so it almost just had to be earned through just like beating it into me, beating it into Because when you walk up to somebody and you're kind of nervous and you're shifting and you're kind of not looking them straight in the eye, it's like they have this subconscious reaction. Why is he nervous? You know, what's going on? You know, <laughs> what's going on? And so it's just like, basically, what you're doing on the street is people are just making these kind of subconscious, especially in New York, where like in New York, if somebody comes up to you and they talk to you, even if they have this big smile on your face, it's going to be like, hey, you know, how are you? Blah, 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 blah. Just need your credit card number right here. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like it's always coming around to something. So it's a very hard stigma to overcome. And so, you know, the way I do it is just by being as calm and non-threatening as possible. And it actually kind of makes me wince when I see it on video because I already kind of have a bit of a high voice. But when I make an approach, I sound like a woman. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I just like, and so what I'll do is, well, the first thing, the first thing I'll do is I'll never approach from behind. So, uh, and I'm serious, it's, it's rule number one. If the first, if the first reaction of somebody to you is this, 
you're screwed. It's like, I, you could be Mother Teresa and they're not gonna wanna talk to you. So if, if Ellen was you know, facing this way, okay? So what I would do, and she's kind of sitting down, but even if she was walking, if she was walking down that way, I'd cross the street and I'd kind of, <laughs> you know? And then I'll make the long turn and then I'll come. And then I always kind of like, I always crouch. And you know, this isn't even any something that I've, I, I made the conscious decision to do. This is just stuff that was like conditioned into me from like so long. And I go, excuse me, <laughs> I, is there any way I can take your photograph? Yes. Okay. <laughs> And so, and so she said, and she said yes. And so, you know, I, well, it's funny because now it's been a best-selling book. It, it's pretty well known in New York, obviously, but still like almost like as a, a tribute and a testament to my roots when I was just a guy walking around with a camera and idea, I always just start out with, do you mind if I take your photo? And sometimes that's enough to say yes. If they start to hesitate, you can kind of feel the no coming. There's a lot of ways to feel the no coming. If they never actually stop moving, <laughs> like, that's, that's very hard to turn into a yes. Um, and so, like, you can tell, you can feel the no coming from the kind of like the facial expression. So if I feel the no coming, then I come out with the phone. It's a best selling book. Here it is, blah, 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 blah. And so then that'll happen. And so if they say yes, notice I never tell them about the interview at first. Um, it's, it, but it's important. It's like you don't want to just drop it on them. You know what I mean? Like, can I take your photo and ask you about your mom's cancer or anything like that? <laughs> like, you just like, because the, the conversations get very intimate very fast. And I just like, you just want to kind of have it be escalating slowly. Um, so Ellen said yes. So I will always take a full body shot first, um, the less intimate. And so, pow. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll sit down and I always, <laughs> uh, and, uh, so, <laughs> and so, but that's, that's one thing I will actually, I'll always try to do. It's like, if you see pictures of me on Instagram or whatever, like so many times I'm laying on the ground, you know, especially cause I'm six four, like, and I just like the goal is to just be as non-threatening as possible. So like I'll, I'll normally just kind of like sit down at somebody's feet, um, like this and, uh, okay. So. Ellen, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is a lot different than I normally do because yeah, me too. obviously. <laughs> um, oh man, I love Ellen. Oh, oh. <laughs> So um, the, the, the reason that it's difficult, obviously, is that normally when I'm having this conversation, it would just be like me and you, like by, you know, a fire escape, you might have been smoking a cigarette or something, and there's not a bunch of people watching, so it's obviously, obviously, it's, it's a, you know, it's, it's a lot easier. And I, and I will tell you guys, like, one thing that I always look for is people standing alone, because it's very, it's very paradoxical that even when people have heard of Humans of New York, even when they know it's going to be shared in front of like six million people later that night, if their friends near them, they'll clam up. Isn't that interesting? If there's like somebody actually there that they know that they'll clam up. And so, you know, obviously, you know, this is a, uh, a very, you know, different environment than I, than I normally uh, ask questions in. And they're very hard questions also. Um, so if you can't think of an answer, don't worry about it. Sometimes I ask people eight questions, they can't think of an answer to any of them. So it's, if, if there's any question you can't think of an answer to, it's, it's not a big deal at all. Um, but one question that I, that I often ask is, what is your greatest struggle right now? Uh, my friend, my best friend is moving to Holland next Wednesday. Okay. So I'm trying to cope with that while getting ready for my exams. Okay. Um, so how long have you known this person? <laughs> Since Christmas. So. <laughs> 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 
That was quick. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'd probably, I'd probably go with that. Uh, that's, uh, wow. Um, yeah, that's great. Normally, if something really makes me laugh, it automatically goes on the blog. Um, that is funny, Chris. Uh, okay. Well, good. You're off the hook. You said something awesome. Um, so now I can just kind of, uh, without Ellen being under the pressure to say something uh, that profound or funny, um, I can kind of you know, explain my thought process of why I'm going through the interview, what I'm doing when I'm going through the interviews. And as you guys have noticed, that the entire kind of path to, uh, up to this point has been escalating levels of intimacy. You know, oh, can I take your photo? Um, do you mind it? And then I take the portrait, and then I come up, I skip a few steps to what I say. Um, since you guys already know, I, I had skipped it. But what I do is I go, well, what I actually do is I've taken over 5,000 pictures of people around New York City, and I find out a little bit about everyone I photograph. And I might photograph you while you're talking or while you're thinking. And then I move into one thing that I often ask, and I always start with like these very, very broad questions, as you guys have probably noticed. And they're never really that, I'm never really looking for those answers necessarily, but I'm looking for starting points to kind of get into a conversation. A lot of times I'll ask a very broad question like, what's your greatest struggle right now? Or give one piece of advice. And, you know, a lot of times the answer is almost always very broad. Like, for example, excuse me, give one piece of advice, be optimistic, okay? And so what I'm always looking for is I'm always looking for something that that person has told me that nobody else has told me. You know, I don't want it to be, and that's normally not an opinion, and it's normally not a philosophy. It's almost always a story. Because we all share similar philosophies, we all share similar opinions on a lot of different issues, but all of our stories are our own. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to like peel off the layers of answers to get from these very broad philosophical statements to a story that I've never heard before because it's that, that, that person. So if they say, give me one piece of advice, be optimistic. <clears throat> Tell me about a time that you had trouble being optimistic. You know? Or take more risks. Tell me about a time when you didn't take a risk that you really regretted it. Forgive people. Who in your life have you had the hardest time forgiving? You know? What's your greatest struggle right now? Um, getting over depression. Tell me about the time in your life that you felt the most depressed. You know? It's always, you know, these, it's always about trying to take things from the very broad, because there's like a safety. There's a safety to answering very generally. You know, with these kind of one word cookie cutter answers. It's protecting. It's like a layer of protection. You don't really reveal anything around your, about yourself by saying, seize the day. But when you're asked to tell about a time that you didn't seize the day, then you're, you're kind of forced to reveal about yourself. And so it's always, it's always a, a effort of taking the, taking the very broad and turning it into the very personal. And that's really you know, what I'm trying to do. Sometimes it's the first thing out of their mouth, her best friend met, she met at Christmas. <laughs> Uh, you know, that's, that's very Ellen. Could not be more Ellen than that. Uh, and, you know, sometimes it takes about 10 or 15 minutes. But if the person has, the way I determine whether somebody's going to go on the blog or not, it's really just like open or closed energy. Sometimes you're just asking the question, the person's giving these clipped answers, you can tell it's not going anywhere. They're just, they've, they've chosen not to disclose, which is perfectly fine. There's a weird dude asking them questions. Um, but, you know, if somebody's sitting there and trying to think of the answers and taking time, I, I will sit there with them as long as possible, 15, 20 minutes, because I know that eventually we're going we're gonna to find out something. And I like to ask about the emotions, too, as you guys have probably seen. Saddest moment, happiest moment, moment you felt most afraid, moment you felt most let down. Because if you guys will think about, like, the pivotal moments in your life, more often than not, there was an extremely strong emotion attached to those moments. And so, like, if you really want to get at, like, the stories that really kind of formed a person, a good place to start is, like, is to, act, to circle around these emotions and try to find out what the stories were associated with these very strong feelings. And so that's, that's what I'm doing with my interview process. One more hug, Ellen. Thanks. <laughs>